Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So it's been a little while since I showed a handheld radio on the channel. I thought you guys might be getting some withdrawal symptoms. So here is the VGC VRN76, a dual band handheld radio. Now I got a BHM79 Bluetooth speaker mic with mine and later in the video, we'll check out the transmit audio quality from the internal mic on the radio and also the Bluetooth microphone. Now this radio is not going to be for everybody as it has a maximum of 16 memories. However, that's because of how this radio has been designed. And it's been designed to be used with a companion application, either on your Android or iOS device. Now you can use this radio without the app and you can program the radio without the app as well. But the HT app adds features that you probably won't find on any other radio. The N76 has built-in GPS and it has a fully working APRS beacon, meaning you can broadcast your location over the APRS network via RF. You can even use the companion app to send and receive messages and view on a map in real time other users that are in range. Now the companion app also has the ability to access the APRS IS servers, i.e. the APRS network over the internet, and then share this information with the radio essentially making the radio perform like an eye gate. The radio itself does have quite a nice feel to it. It doesn't feel cheap or as if it will break easy. And one of the best visual features for me is a display, but we'll get onto that in a moment. Use your keyboard and front face and speaker microphone is on the front panel just below that screen. And on the left side of the radio, we have a PTT button along with two function buttons, which can be programmed by the user. Now these allow quick access to whichever feature or function you wish. The right side of the radio has a speaker microphone connection, which looks smaller than the standard Kenwood style that we've seen on other radios. However, you won't really need this if you're using Bluetooth or if you're going to be using the mobile application to program the radio, as it's all done over Bluetooth. Now on the top is a single rotary control, which is used for volume and power off along with a status LED and of course the antenna connection. The rechargeable battery can be recharged via USB as there's a USB-C port located on the bottom back panel of the battery. Now as mentioned earlier, I really do like the display and that's because it has a black background with the menu text in white. Now to me, this makes reading the display while using the radio much more comfortable whether you're in a bright light situation or even at nighttime in a dark environment. Now the menu is also easy to navigate and it's unique. And what I mean by that is a lot of handheld radios coming out of China all seem to have the same menu system. So it's refreshing to see something new and actually usable. Now, before we go any further, I'm sure a lot of you will want to know about the spurious emissions, whether this radio would be legal to use in certain countries. Well, you will be pleased to know that in my opinion, from the tests that I performed using my tiny SA Ultra Spectrum Analyzer, transmit on two meters and 70 centimeters appeared to be within reasonable limits. Now I know the tiny SA Ultra Spectrum Analyzer is not lab gear. However, it does provide us a ballpark figure. Now, if we take a look at this reading, we can see that the second harmonic is more than 55 dB lower than the fundamental i.e. the frequency that we're actually transmitting on. And in this reading, the fundamental is on the two meter handband at 145 megahertz. Now, if we take a look at this reading where I was transmitting from the N76 on the 70 centimeter handband at 435 megahertz, we see that the second harmonic is around 50 dB lower than that fundamental. Again, I think this is well within limits. Now, when it comes to radios coming out of China, there are only a select few manufacturers which actually design their radios to be compliant with spurious emissions and VGC or Vero is definitely one of them. Now the speaker mic, the BHM79, is an optional accessory and in the hand it feels just like any other hand mic that I've used before. Now it can be charged using a USB-C socket which is located at the bottom and if you notice the USB-C port cover, it has a rubber seal around it. So I guess it helps with any moisture getting into that socket. The left side of the mic has a PTT in the middle. That's that large button. And then just below this, there's the power button, which you hold to turn on and off. 
And then if you double tap that once it's powered on, the mic will then go into Bluetooth pairing mode. There are also a couple of shoulder buttons, one on each side of the mic, and these are used to control the volume. On the top of the mic, there's a rather strange toggle switch, but this allows you to change memory channel on the radio. So you could potentially clip the radio to your bell or put it in your bag and then just use the microphone to control the radio remotely. Now, before we get into the mobile application, let's take a quick listen to the transmitted audio. This is M0 DQW, Mic Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, testing the audio using the actual microphone on the radio. M0 DQW, testing audio from the microphone on the radio itself. This is uh, M0 DQW now testing the Bluetooth microphone. This is now the Bluetooth microphone. Uh, M0 DQW just checking the audio using the Bluetooth microphone speaker mic. M0 DQW over. This is uh, M0 DQW uh, now speaking around uh, around six inches away from the Bluetooth microphone. This is around six inches away from the Bluetooth mic. This is uh, M0 DQW just testing audio. M0 DQW over. What we'll also do is test the power output of this radio. So first on two meters at 145 megahertz, we see an output power of around four watts. And then up on the 70 centimeter handband at 433 megahertz, we also see an output power of around four watts. Now, two things to consider here is whether or not my nice eye meter is 100% accurate and the fact that the battery is only around 60%. So with the application loaded on my iPad and Bluetooth enabled, I now need to enable pairing on the radio itself. Now, this is very easy to do and it's located in the general settings area under connection. Now, once the iPad detects the radio, you'll see N76 appear in the bindable devices list. Now, just tap on that and then the app will ask you to confirm pairing. You should only need to do this once as when you come back to the app, it should remember it. Now, once connected, you'll see this screen, which pulls all the radio settings back to the application. You have a grid of 16 memories, which you can simply tap to change the channel on the radio itself. Now to program each of these channels, you just hold your finger or whatever part of your body you wish on the channel that you wish to edit. Here you can now give that memory a title and then change parameters such as transmit and receive frequencies, high, medium or low power and any CTCSS tones for transmit and receive if you want to use that channel with a ham radio repeater. Now here I am just programming in a local 2 meter FM ham radio repeater called GB3VA. Now, I know I mentioned that it has 16 memories and the radio does have 16 memories. However, you can store memory banks within the app itself. So if you want to recall another block of 16, you can do so and then just download them to the radio. Now, to demonstrate some of the features of the app, I'll program in another channel. This time it will be on the 2 meter APRS frequency, which here in the UK is 144.8 megahertz. Now, when the radio receives any packets of data, especially APRS packets, that data is sent to the app. The app then decodes them to either place stations on a map with an icon or show messages that have been sent via the APRS network. Now, after some time, the map will populate with lots of icons, which are essentially other APRS users or static setups like weather stations. If you press the message bubble on the bottom right, you'll be able to see the decoded APRS packets and also check the members list, which is essentially a list of all the ham radio call signs that have been received so far. Of course, these buttons may differ on the Android version of this application. If your mobile device has internet, then you can also connect to different network radio channels. You can even configure the app to transmit and receive those network radio channels through the actual radio when using the Android version. Now, the N76 supports dual channel meaning you can have two VFOs active at the same time. For example, here we have two meter APRS frequency on the top and then one of my local two meter repeaters on the bottom. Now, one last little clip to play you is from the air band. Now, as well as two and 70 support, this radio can receive on the FM broadcast band and the whole of the air band using AM. Level 
Now let me know down in the comments what you think about the quality of the AM reception. I know in the past some radios are diabolical at receiving AM, but what do you think about this radio? Anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.